Dylan Schumacher with Citadel Defense, and it's for... Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher with Citadel Defense, and it's another edition of Tactical Book Review. And today's book is On Killing by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. Uh, kind of the water uh, watershed book for the study of killing, kind of killiology. The first edition of this book came out in 1995, and this book is copyrighted through 2009, so there have been a couple updates since then. Uh, overall, very good book. Um, you know, it, it was the watershed work on the book, right? Before this book, no one had really studied the actual act of killing and what that does to people and, and the history of it and so forth. So, a couple high points in this book, a couple things to learn that, that I found very helpful for me is uh, one, he goes through the history of killing and how human beings uh, have a resistance to killing. Uh, th th it's not a natural act he claims to kill. So, th there's a there's a natural resistance to killing another person. Now, he doesn't really know why, and I think that's interesting. So, as you may or may not know, I'm a, I'm a Jesus guy, right? So, I think, and I think it, it, it's fairly evident to me, that the reason human beings have such a strong resistance to killing is because we're all made in God's image. And one of the things that that means, it means a couple things, but one of the things that that means is that for me to kill another human being would be to disgrace God's image. Ultimately, that's why killing is wrong. And uh, there, there's a natural human resistance to disgracing God's image. I, I think that's super interesting, uh, both on a philosophical and a theological level. Uh, I, I just think that that's incredibly uh, interesting and fascinating. But human beings, uh, for better or worse, and I would argue it's for better, right, have a resistance to killing each other. Uh, and so he talks about that. He talks about through history how that resistance has occurred. He talks about things like uh, during like the Civil War and stuff, they would find muskets that were loaded like 15 times because guys would bring their, their rifle up to shoot, right? You bring a rifle up just like you bring an AR up. You'd bring, bring the rifle up to shoot, and uh, they couldn't they couldn't do it. They couldn't pull the trigger. So they just pretend like they shot, and they'd load again with everybody else. And so they just keep doing that, right? And uh, eventually, when they when they would run away or whatever, uh, they'd toss the rifle, and so they found these rifles later that had been loaded like 15 times just on top of each other. I thought that was super interesting. Uh, and basically, uh, once they got to Vietnam, he talks about how they changed their training a little bit. They started focusing on killing. Like, that's what you're here to do in the military. You're here to kill. This book is entirely written from a military perspective. Uh, and, and you're here to do that. And how they were able to increase the fire rate. Right? He talks about during World War II, uh, only two out of ten guys on the line would typically be shooting. The other eight guys would find some other job to do all of a sudden. Right? They'd be... Uh, Trans, I mean, important stuff, very brave stuff. It's, it's, it's not a bravery thing. It's just people couldn't get themselves to pull the trigger. Uh, so they'd be doing things like shuttling messages or caring for wounded people or whatever, but on a line of 100 guys, only 20% of them are actually shooting at the enemy. And by the time you get to Vietnam, you get that number up to 95%, and they did some things in their training to, to uh, handle that, like starting shooting at human-sized targets, right, or, or silhouette targets, which is something standard now in the industry. We all shoot at silhouette targets. Uh, so again, I think that's super interesting to kind of learn that history and learn where that comes from and learn what you're doing and what you're training yourself to do when you're shooting at silhouette targets. You're ultimately teaching yourself to kill, right? Now, whether or not you like that or are comfortable with that, that's what's happening. And it's important for you to know that. One of the best sections early in the book is where he talks about the fight or flight response. And he says there's actually four responses. It's flight, flight, posture or submit and he kind of breaks down what those mean I, I thought that was incredibly interesting that's going to get added into my classes as we talk about the fight or flight response he goes through uh distance in relation to killing and basically talks about how the further you are in physical distance from killing uh the less trauma it, it makes on the killer itself uh and the less psychological impact it has on the killer itself uh, he also talks about other kinds of distance like emotional distance or social class distance and and goes through those breakdown and those factors he breaks down atrocities and kind of how those happen, kind of the anatomy of atrocities, which it was, uh, from an intellectual perspective, fascinating. I mean, obviously, atrocities are horrible moral evils, uh, but to kind of understand or at least try to understand how he breaks those down uh, and how they occur and kind of what happens in people to get them to that point. A couple things I disagree about with the book or didn't, didn't quite enjoy is he, he takes a very Freudian perspective on psychology. And what I mean by that is he often links it back to sex. Uh, and, and the way he talks about killing and sex uh, kind of being quasi-intermingled or related, 
I just wasn't buying. Like, I don't believe him that that's the case. And, and I also just didn't like it. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, you can read the book for yourself to draw your own conclusions. The other thing that I really didn't like is, this was written in the 90s, but he talks about how video games are desensitizing kids to kill. Uh, now, in 1995, I was a kid. Okay, I was not, I was not an adult in 1995. And I grew up playing these video games. So I grew up in this generation he's talking about. Um, and I don't buy it in the sense that, and he's mostly talking about the point and shoot games, right? The arcade games where you point and shoot. And he's saying that's the exact same training we use in the military and police, and our kids are playing those games and it's turning them into killers. Now, on one hand, I guess you could argue and you could say, well, Dylan, since, since you've been a kid in the 90s, look at all the school shootings and all the other things that have happened. Surely this is a contribution. On the other hand, I think hundreds of thousands of us have played those games, and we're not going out and murdering people for no reason. Uh, so I, I just didn't buy that. I didn't buy the argument. I, I've never bought I'm an avid video game player. I've been my whole life, right? So I don't buy the argument that video games are turning me and my generation into these horrible murderous monsters. So that is one thing I disagree with. Overall, I would recommend on killing. I, I think if you're in this shooting space, uh, especially if you're, you're some kind of instructor or teacher, or if you just want to know more, you just want to know more about uh, the study of kiliology and, and kind of what that means, uh, this is the book. This is the go-to book. He also wrote another book. Uh, I think it's called On Combat. I haven't read that one yet, but I would recommend this book if, if those are things you want to learn more about. If that weirds you out and you want nothing to do with that, well, that, that's fine. But as a concealed carrier, as, as a private citizen, uh, I found this book informative. Well, guys, that's it. That's this episode of Tactical Book Review. Until then, do brave deeds and endure.